All right. Okay. So, hello, dears. <laughs> so, welcome to the continuation on our lecture on the different culture techniques in parasitology. And for this lecture, we're going now to start, uh, for this video rather, uh, we're going now to start with the first method for culturing helminths, and that is your Harada Mori or filter paper culture technique, okay, and it, which is also our lab activity after scotch tape swab, okay? All right. Now, uh, before I forget there, guys, no. Not all parasites, I forgot to mention, not all parasites can be cultured, okay? So you, you may be thinking, sir, what, what, are there methods for Ascaris? Are there methods for Trichuris? Um, as far as I know, um, we don't usually opt for culture when we detect them. Because again, the presence of their eggs, no? Their presence is enough. Yes, <laughs> The presence of their eggs no? um, on the sample, on the stool sample, is already definitive. You can already diagnose an infection that is caused by Ascaris, Trichuris, whatever, based on eggs lang mismo. Okay, but there are some parasites, mga good, that you can you use culture to really help in speciation. Okay, and you may be, and you will notice, no, that most of these methods, as I've mentioned then kanina, most of these methods are from the previous slide. Most of these methods are opt, okay, uh, or are looking for, no, or are culturing for the detection of usually strongyloides or hookworm. Because, because again, why? Recall, can you remember why? Because their eggs uh, are quite similar. Diba? They look similar. So uh, if we rely on eggs lang, we cannot uh, identify who are they no? <laughs> or what is the, the infection talaga. Okay, so there are some um, labs or some, that's why, uh, that's why there are culture methods for these. No? I don't know if you've noticed, but usually it's for hookworms, strongy, and all that. Okay, and trichostrongylus. Okay, because again, they have, they look quite similar in terms of their eggs. Okay, all right. And um, again, Harada Mori, it's useful for the detection of infections with your hookworm, strongy, and trichostrongylus to, again, as mentioned, facilitate their specific identification of their larval stages. So we're after for their larva. Okay, so we're going to uh, compare later. Okay, all right. And your fecal uh, material, again, it should not be refrigerated because some species will not further develop into a larva no, um, once they are refrigerated. So example, from your stool, it contains already the eggs of hookworm or strongyba. And then you refrigerate it. So there are some species of hookworm and I think strongy then that will not uh, develop further into your larva because again they have been refrigerated so therefore you cannot identify so it would be difficult for you to identify it okay all right so it should be fresh again it should not be refrigerated and for our materials and reagents as you can see um, the ones in red are those that are really significant talaga so you have you need a 10 or 15 ml centrifuge tubes your distilled or sterilized water filter paper strip okay and your aluminum foil or stopper and beaker with hot water okay so um, will then uh, identify or will then know whom, what are they for? <laughs> what, is they, what, is, what is their use? Okay, all right. So we'll now go to the procedure. So the first one is we then prepare a test tube, which is the 10 to 15 ml of test tube. And then we put 2 ml distilled or heat sterilized water. And then what we do next is using a filter paper strip, okay? Strip siya, like um, rectangle na medyo long, ayan. Okay, we then smear, so ato siyang pahiran, okay, of two grams of, ajo uh, half gram lang pala of feces, the size of a small marble on the filter paper using an applicator stick, leaving a margin, okay, at both sides and ends unsmeared. Ayan, so here's a picture, no? So this is your stool, let's say, and then a filter paper strip, and then you smear, okay, halfway lang, halfway, and then, this is now your appearance. So as you can see, you smear the feces, okay? And you have margins at the side and smear, okay? And it should be a thin smear lang, thin smear of your feces. All right, okay. And um, next is we then insert the filtered paper on the test tube that we prepared. And then the other end here at the bottom, it should be touching at the water, okay? All right, uh, yes. And then we then cover the mouth of the tube with an aluminum foil or a rubber stopper. And then we allow it to stand for 8 to 10 days. Ayan. In a dark place at room temperature. So lights off. Yang ganahan. <laughs> Charot. Did you want to lights off? No? As in, I don't like lights off. You cannot see kasi. <laughs> I like. <laughs> I mean like, mas nice lights on, dears. You know, you need to 
you need to examine your specimen. Diba? As med text. <laughs> you need lights to examine your specimen. So you can both apply that in the laboratory and in other aspects of your life. So you need life. You need life. You need light. So lights on to examine the specimen. You don't know. Unsay mga na agile. So you need to examine well. <laughs> so how can you examine well if you don't have lights? <laughs> yes, Mark, what is this? <laughs> lights on, lights on. Okay, all right. Yeah. So dark place at room temperature. So dark place. Okay, all right. And then after the fifth day, your hookworm eggs will develop into your rhabditiform. And then after the tenth day, it will become a filariform. Right? I've mentioned, I think you can recall that. Hopefully, I mentioned ako. In our lecture on parasites and fecal smears, you have two types of larva. You have the L1, which is rhabditiform, the feeding stage, diba? Right? And L3, which is your filariform, the non-feeding stage, and usually the infective stage na of your hookworms or strongy. Okay? All right. Ayan. And we immerse the tube in hot water after diba, 10 days yata, uh, for 15 minutes to kill the larvae. So we need to immerse it in your hot water, not boiling, to kill the larva that could have been present okay, in your sample or in the filter paper. Why? Why? Why do you think so? Why do you need to kill the larva? It's because if dili mamatay ang larva or if you not kill the larva, it could be harmful to you as uh, med techs that will examine it. Why? Because again, it's the infective stage, diba? recall. It's the infective stage of your parasite. <laughs> so if it's still alive, and then let's say there will be spillage or there will be whatever na nangyari, and then, you know, you have skin, guys, okay? So it could, it could be of a potential harm to you, okay? So that's why we need to kill the larva. Kill this love. Pam, param. Chakto! Joke! Mash up yun, Mark. <laughs> okay, all right. Ayan, okay. So that's uh, the procedure. And this is now the preparation. So as you can see, quite a long tube, no? Well, wala siya nag-wear gloves. Sorry naman. Okay, so as you can see, this is a thin smear of feces. Pero as you can see sa picture, parang hindi siya masyadong thin. But anyway, all right. Thin smear of feces. This is the filter paper. Ayan. And then the water is, again, slightly below uh, the fecal smear. Okay? All right. Ayan. So that's your... Uh, overall preparation. Okay, and again, we'll provide a video for that for laboratory activity. Okay, on how to make it. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. And next is, of course, after you boil, uh, you put it in hot water. You then remove the filter paper. Okay, and then you dispose properly. And then the liquid that remains in the tube, we then subject that to centrifugation. Okay. And then after centrifugation, we throw off the supernatant and then examine the sed sediment for the presence of any larva under LPO. And if you want to confirm, you then uh, shift to HPO. Okay, shift to management. Charot lang. Joke, okay. And for reporting the results, if positive, you then indicate the, uh, the stage and the name of the parasite. So example, positive for filariform larva of hookworm, positive for rhabditiform larva of strongyloides, whatever, whatever. And if negative, non-seen non or no parasite C. Okay. All right, that's the overall procedure for Harada Mori, which is again our laboratory activity. Okay? All right, so quite simple and straightforward. Okay, so, but it takes time, diba? Okay, you need to incubate it to 7 to 10 days or 5 to 10 days by yon. Okay? All right, ayan. Uh, an additional note some of the rationale or the reason for Harada Mori the capillary flow of water, no? So when you say capillary, you. The, the water moves up, okay, through the filter paper. And this will ensure that your feces are moist, okay, because you are, that would um, help in the growing of your larva. I think they like moist environment. Grand lag basa. I mean, who wouldn't want them? Charat lang. Okay. So, moist. It will keep, keep the feces moist, which again would facilitate the hatching of the eggs into the larva, okay. And it should be, the tube should be examined daily so that the water level in the tube remains several millimeters below the fecal mass. Because we don't want din naman na mabasa o intense ang fecal uh, mass. We don't want to immerse the whole fecal mass in water because that would um, not be beneficial na. That would, die, that would uh, kill na yata the larva. Okay, just a small water lang to, to go, go, uh, go up to the filter paper because just to keep the, the feces moist. Okay? All right. And um, tubes should be kept again for 7 to 10 days, but infective larvae of some species may be found now within 5 days. Okay? And again, you have uh, different larvae that you can find. For hookworm, it will move down into the water at the bottom of the tube. And for strongy, 
it can go up or down. Okay? So, <laughs> ang hookworm kay bottom gid siya, ang strongy kay versa. Okay? <laughs> Yeah, so, so there's a question or like how do I remember this? Si Strongy, di ba sa pangalan na? Strongy is strong. So siya ang muanto sa taas. Or siya yung pupunta sa taas. Or it's the one that will go up. Okay, because it's strong. Strongy loides. And of course, ang hookworm will go down. Okay, but according to here, Strongy can go up or down. Okay, and if it goes up, it will accumulate at the end of the filter paper strip. Ayan. So that's why it's really important nako, to really, really boil. I have to really put it in hot water to kill the larvae that could have been present there. Okay, Ooh, scary. Okay, all right. Ayan. So, basta, but for differentiation purposes, so that you will know kung sino, kung what species talaga, or what parasite will go up the Harada Mori filter paper. Um, preparation si Strongy. Why? Because strong siya, kaya siya pumunta sa taas. Strong giloides. Strong giloides. And of course, ang hookworm ang down. Or if you want the bastos, hookworm ang bottom, si Strongy kay versa top. <laughs> versa top. Okay, alright. Ayan. So, pwede siyang versa top, meaning pwede siyang taas or sa ilalim, but predominantly dito siya sa taas. Ayan. So, <laughs> okay, so mga terms dyan. Okay. But yeah, so choose your fighter. Kayo na bahala. Choose your bias kung ano yung mnemonic na pre-novide ko sa'yo, sa inyo. But if you have other mnemonics, then go ahead. Okay? Alright. Ayan. So basta as long as you know kung sino yung pupunta sa taas at saka sino yung pupunta sa baba. Or at least you know who goes upward and goes downward. Or who is the top and who is the bottom. Okay? Alright. And the verse. Na, chat lang. Okay, alright. So those are some additional notes about the Harada Mori. Uh, preparation. Now, of course, very important no, for the Harada Mori preparation, what we're really after is for the identification and, um, and um, eventually the speciation no, of the larva present there, um, present there in the um, Harada Mori preparation. Okay? And this is also what we use in differentiating hookworm and your strongyloides. We then observe your, their larva. Okay? The main um, comparison or the main um, point no, of comparison or of speciation between your hookworm and your strongy is through their larva. Okay? Uh, through their larva talaga. The harabditi form and the filari form. And then we'll go to that sa ilang differences later. Okay? Alright, so again, for hookworm and strongy, why do we need to differentiate? Because, again, as I've mentioned, they have the same life cycle, quite the same life cycle rather. Uh, they have the same mode of transmission pala, sorry, not life cycle. They have the same mode of transmission, they have the same eggs, di ba? They have the same infective stage, di ba? So, pare-pareha sila. Okay, so, how do we differentiate? Again, we then go now to the different stages in their life cycle. And one of that is, uh, we'll focus, Jude, in the larva of your hookworm and strongy, and we compare them, okay, later. All right, ayan. So, again, species of hookworm that can cause infection to man, you have Necator americanus, or your New world, nako, di ba? I've mentioned how to remember that. Basta kung sino yung letter N, Necator, siya din ang new world. Ayan. Of course, an Ancelostoma duodenale, which is your old word, old world, hookworm. Okay? And lastly, you have um, Ancelostoma ceylanicum. I did not put, I, I have, I, I forgot or I was not able to put it in your Lecture on parasites in fecal smears. Yes, Ancelostoma ceylanicum. It can infect both animals, dogs, cats, then and mammals uh, and humans. Okay, Ancelostoma ceylanicum. But your cats, di ba, you have also Ancelostoma brasiliense. And for dogs, you have Ancelostoma caninum. And they are really parasites of uh, hookworms, good sila, of cats and dogs, respectively. But they can also infect man. No, when they penetrate, di ba, your skin and can cause unsa to? creeping eruptions or your cutaneous larva migrant, diba? Okay, all right, ayan. And again, as mentioned, infective stage, both of them is your L3 or filariform larva. Diagnostic stage is larva and or ova for hookworm. But for um, strongy, it's usually rhabditiform or the filariform larva. Why? Because again, your strongyloides are, your eggs are rarely found there, okay? Usually, if for strongyloides, what you can see in the stool sample are the larva na, Okay. All right, ayan. Mode of transmission, both of them, skin penetration. And larva, both of them, larva of them, they exhibit heart-to-lung migration. Di ba? Ang sa itong mnemonics? Ash. Asker is strongy and 
hookworm. Nako, press the buzzer. Ash. Okay. All right. So again, uh, for differentiation, your hookworm egg and your strongyloides egg. As you can see, it's quite similar. Good. They look similar in appearance. But as you can see, the strongyloides, ang mga kumpol kumpol or the clumps inside, which are your developing lar developing larva, they are much more um, little in number compared to your hookworm, diba? But generally, they look the same good, okay? So you cannot uh, identify them good by egg, okay? So we then go to their larva. All right, okay, now you may be thinking, sir, what's the meaning of new world, old world? Old world, it refers to, parang these are old terms before that, um, if I'm not mistaken, ha, that, <laughs> that, um, that designates like old world uh, sa Europe, Okay, and New World is katulad mga America and I know it. It started with parang Christopher Columbus, if I'm not mistaken, talaga. No, Christopher Columbus was from the Europe, de ba? So Old World, and then they discovered America. Actually, wala niya gidiscover ng America. Ah, but anyway, <laughs> it he went there to the uh, American islands and all that, de ba? And then dito nila na discover ang New World. Ayan, so dito na dito na derive ang words. Okay. I hope na gets lang. If I'm not mistaken, then so just to clarify, kung why is it new world and old world? So when I say new world, old world, in the new world, basically kito mga America, ana, if I'm not mistaken, the predominant species there is Nectar americanus, ganern. And then for Ancelus toma do ordinale, um, do sa Europe and whatever, um, ang predominant species is the old is the Ancelus is Ancelus toma do ordinale. Siya ang predominant dito. That's why it's called old world and then new world. Okay? All right, so I hope na gets lang. All right, okay, so that's for just a basic, again, review lang, hopefully review lang, of your hookworm and strongyloides. So we then go to the larvae, larva of your hookworm, which is your first. So we'll start first with your L1 rhabditiform. So as you can see, ang L1 rhabditiform is short and stout. As you can see, it's quite, medyo big siya, no? And medyo short din siya. And as you can see, it's open mouth. Ayan, this is open mouth. This is its mouth. And because again, it's your feeding stage. When you come, when you say again, rhabditiform, this is the feeding stage larva of your uh, parasite. Okay, all right. And aside from that, it has a long buccal cavity. When you say long buccal cavity, mataas ang kanyang baba. Ayan. So that's long buccal cavity. Ayan. So that is si Ann Curtis. Charot malaki. <laughs> or si uh, I I charot lang. Okay. So long buccal cavity. This one here. That's the buccal cavity or the mouth itself. Okay. And aside from that, it has a short or small genital primordium or iyahang organ, genital organ. So as you can see, dili kayo makit andiri. Alright, because again, you cannot see, or because it's small, so you cannot see its genital primordium. So please take note of that characteristics because again, that's uh, what we're going to compare with the strongyloides larvae later. Okay, so that's for its rhabditiform, the feeding stage larva of your hookworm. Uh, yeah, hookworm. And next is, of course, your filariform. As you can see, your L3 filariform larva, it's now longer and much more slender, diba? So it's much slender and longer. So, medyo ano siya, sexy. Okay, all right. And closed mouth, it doesn't have any mouth anymore, as you can see. And because, again, it's your non-feeding stage na. Okay. And aside from that, it has a short esophagus. Ayan, medyo short ng esophagus niya. Okay, all right. And lastly, as you can see, it has a sheathed pointed tail very characteristic sheathed pointed tail pointed ang kanyang tail as you can see all right okay that's the l3 filariform larvae larva of your hookworm okay and we go now to also to its adults because your hookworm adults can also be used to uh, differentiate the species so we'll start first with your female and next for your male okay um, common features for the adults, there's a bend, as you can see, there's a bend, okay, which is much more prominent in your uh, Necator Americanus. So, at the posterior end, meaning at the back, there's a bend, okay, and for males, you have your prominent copulatory bursa, okay. Huh? Why is it in females? Okay, uh, this is a copulatory bursa, okay, but your males are prominent, most prominent sa kanya. Okay, so in the copulatory bursa, by the name itself, it is used for copulation. Okay, parang ito yung organ nila for copulation. Okay, alright, this is the adults, ha? Adults, copulatory bursa. So don't be confused with the larva, ilahang genital primordium, which is still the same, uh, parang it's genital organ nila. That's for the larva. But for adults, copulatory bursa. Okay, and aside from that, we then go to the different types of um, parang uh, 
mouth parts <laughs> sa imuhang um, uh, different species of hookworm. We'll start first with your Ansosoma duodenale, which contains your teeth. Ayan, that's like teeth. And then for Nekator americanus, you can see it's considered as plates. Okay, and to differentiate the two, you have a table there. So we'll start first with a common name. Nekator americanus, by the name itself, it's your new world, letter N, letter N. And aside from that, the direct translation of Nekator americanus is American murderer. Ayan. So, chaktore ako new world. It's in the America. Okay, so American murderer, the other name. And Ansosoma duodenale, Old World Hookworm. Its shape is, ang N Americanus is S, okay? And your Ancelostoma is quite passi, okay? Alright, ayan. Buccal cavity or ilahang mouth contains, again, for Ancelostoma duodenale, you have, ah, tama, two pairs of teeth, okay? And your Necator Americanus, it's cutting plates, okay? And copulatory bursa for the two, for N Americanus, it's, Barbs or bristle-like, as you can see, bristle-like, ganern, okay? And uh, three dig uh, two digits lang, so one and two, parang ganern, okay? All right, and for um, Ancelostoma doon na nalit, tripartite, tuloka digits, simple, not barbed, so parang ano lang, one, two, three, I think, if I'm not mistaken, if chakto akong pag-understand, okay? All right, but what we're really looking after is the, the mouth parts, okay? So again, for Necator Americanus, what type of Parang teeth, do they have? Do they have teeth? No, they have what we call cutting plates. So how do I recall? How do I remember? Dami ko ng mnemonics, ha? Nekator, so cut. Naasay, cutting plates. Ayan, that's how I remember. Nekat, nekator, naasay, cutting plates. Ayan, okay. And of course, ang answers na maduod na na ang naay teeth. Okay, so this is what they use on attaching to your intestinal mucosa. All right, and because of that, diba, pwedeng, it can cause IDA, iron deficiency anemia. Diba? As I've mentioned in our lecture on a uh, previous lecture. Diba? Okay, and for Ancelostoma duodenale, it contains again two pairs of teeth. So as you can see, two pairs one, two, three, four. Okay. For um, Necator Americanus, again, semilunar cutting plates. For Ancelostoma brasiliense, which is your cat hookworm, two pairs then of cutting cut of teeth. <laughs> A brasiliense, which is for cat hookworm, two pairs then of teeth. But for A caninum, for the dog, as you can see, three pairs na siya. So, ang pinakadaghan of pairs of teeth or the species that contains many uh, teeth is your Ancelostoma caninum or your dog hookworm. Okay. Tama ba? Yes. Three pairs of teeth. Do not forget. Okay. But Ancelostoma duodenale, uh, the species good for humans, can, it contains two pairs of teeth. All right. Okay. And here are some pictures for Ancelostoma adult. As you can see, the female and this is your male. This, as you can see, this is the copulatory bursa. This is the bursa. So as you can see, it's um, not like it, it really like it uh, it really looks like bristle like no pero ang sa bristle talaga guys is you can see the different uh, parang they are parang ganito yeah that's the bristle like but as you can see for ancelostoma straight lang paganer so simple okay all right and here are parang electron microscope na good the different teeth and americanos cutting plates okay all right and here a small one all right and lastly of course a duodenale your two pairs of teeth. But very scary. <laughs> scary, John. Okay. All right. <laughs> Ayan. So that's for the electron microscope of your different teeth sa species of hookworm, which again, we use for, for speciation. Okay? All right. Ayan. Okay. So yes. So basically, <laughs> yeah, that's for hookworm. Now for the next video, we'll focus now on the strongyloides circularis na larvae. Okay? Which we then use to compare to our hookworm larvae. Okay, so I'll see you on the next video.